Hello! This is a bit of an impromptu video. Um, I set a challenge on my Facebook group to create a floral envelope and I put a couple of freebies on for people to use if they wanted to. So um, I'm not obviously going to do the challenge but I thought I'd make a couple of envelopes because I had that wonderful Happy Mail yesterday and I really wanted to use the die. Um, this one didn't work quite so well because the envelope at the back is not so attractive. Um, so I made that one and I made this one which I actually really love. Sometimes simple is the best isn't it? Um, and this one has quite a nice back so um, it's a higher envelope and it, you can't really see through the window once you take the tag out. I haven't, I've got to do something to the back of that. But I just thought I would pop along and show you what I did. So um, I started, um, I want obviously these size envelopes are more usable and I have one of these big envelopes. So what I'm going to do is cut it down. I think I've had, I've done a tutorial on, on how I kind of cut down envelopes before but I'm just going to do one and basically I'm just going to slide off both sides and I'm just keeping it the size of this part of the board and when it's finished it's about 13 centimetres give or take roughly 13 centimetres it works out at. Um, so take my my envelope and my pencil and my ruler with the guidelines on and what I've done is I've just there's two squares and I've just counted two squares in and I draw a line down there and I'm working on the inside because it'll all be hidden um, and you won't see these lines anyway and two centimeters down there uh, so I take my scissors and the centre panel we want to keep but we need to just cut out that little flap at the bottom and the top or that rectangle. The middle one we need for our flap to close our envelope up but I, I do this quite a bit because um, these envelopes, these particular ones, they're kind of like a linen paper, they're really lovely. And I got them from Paper Chase when they had a sale. And um, they are rather large for journals. They don't, they kind of just about fit in the back of a traveller's notebook, kind of, um, if I've got fabric cover. But they're not particularly wonderful size wise for much else. So, um, just take my, I think this is a nail tool. <laughs> I think it's for nails. Um, I bought a set, very cheap set, um, to try and do some flowers. I watched a tutorial on curling flowers and the flowers looked amazing, but mine not so much. But it's very handy for kind of scoring funny edges like so. Against my ruler. So all I'm going to do is take my very little scissors, um, oh actually no, I think I'll use my, so I'm going to use both of these, so the large one I'm going to use to round my envelope flap, and then the small one I'm going to use to round the new inside kind of hinge. So now we have our brand new envelope shape. Just going to make sure nothing is sticking out where it shouldn't. Marvellous. Now this bit is where it got a little bit tricky. <laughs> um, and I tried two methods um, for each of the envelopes. I'm just grabbing my die. My die cutting machine. Um, the cat is was awake and she was just um, climbing on my desk so I had this at the side, I had to move it off my desk to get it out of her way right so these are the awesome dies I got in my happy mail yesterday uh, these ones 
they're like a little torn edge and the code is 662694 and this is just a little piece of washi tape that I'd used off something else which I used to just and I haven't got any of these perfect yet they all, they've all moved <laughs> I didn't want to waste this washi tape this was just a piece I tore off something I was doing so I had a little spare bit and I'm just reusing that so I'm just popping the die inside of my inside of my envelope I'm putting the cutting mat on the bottom for this one and then what I did no, this is the way I'm going to do this one you do get a bit of a wrinkle you can probably see you get a bit of a wrinkle at the back for this method and this method you didn't get a wrinkle at the back but there was another issue I can't remember what it was but there was an issue actually what I think I did what I'm going to do is now I want to do it this way up because I want to make sure that die doesn't move no definitely needs to be the other way so ignore everything I just said I'm putting my blank die at the bottom but what I need to do is slide this flap underneath it and then close my envelope and just kind of I'm going to have to use another piece of my washi. This is the only washi tape I've got on my desk because I'm using it. <laughs> I'm using it in my planner and all sorts of things. I don't really want to use it for this. but So hopefully you can see. I've just popped another piece of washi tape on there. It's not in the centre at all. I'm just going to move that over a little bit. Oh, sorry. How you bored yet? <laughs> um, there we go. So let me just check I'm in frame. Yeah, I'm going to tuck the part of my envelope that I do not want cut by my die underneath the bottom cutting plate. And then I'm going to close the envelope up. It's not going to make this perfect envelope, but it does wrinkle. I'm going to put this through. but I can live with that. Um, my cutting boards need definitely need cleaning with a toothbrush. I saw um, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter doing that and it really does. I might make some more so I'm keeping my washi tape for now. It really does actually work. It's brilliant. I'm cleaning it with a toothbrush because I find I'm getting um, I'm getting the prints from all the die cuts on whatever I put through my my machine so I know it's time to give it clean. Now I'm just inking the, the hole for my little window. I mean these are fairly similar apart from the fact I'm using a whole envelope to the little um, tiny window envelopes I made quite a long time ago. Um, for the CD, you know, instead of the little CD sleeves, I made those little ones. So this is kind of a version of that. Now, over here, I have the acetate that I got from my lovely Happy Mail yesterday. Now, I've already made one envelope. I've got two pieces left, one slightly bigger than the other. You probably can't see this, but this is a piece of the acetate that I cut in half to make one of the other envelopes. And this is going to go on the inside. And I did pick the die that was kind of about the right size for that. To be able to cut that acetate in half and get two dies out of it. Two windows. The first one I messed up, so 
um, that's why I, that was a bit too small. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I'm about to say do what I say not what I do but you don't need too much glue but it's a bit too late now because I've put a bit too much glue on there. And now I'm just going to lay my acetate over the hole uh, and I haven't put glue anywhere near the right place. But the marvellous thing about this is you don't have to use acetate at all. Um, in the little CD ones that I made I used packaging. I used packaging. I did use some acetate but I, um, I think in the tutorial I showed some packaging that I'd used. I've got some bobbly glue there. I'm going to leave that to dry while I have a little think and I've got a little bit of seepage. Ah! Oh, that's pants. We don't like seepage. Let me just get my baby wipes. some of this glue well it's not a Trace Fox video if I don't mess it up at least once is it and where's there we go just get that little bit of glue off there brilliant so um, I just need to decide what I'm going to pop on these now I actually really like the fact on this one that the stenciling is on the outside but I do really like that one with the stenciling on the inside so I think the best thing to do is decide what I'm going to have oh yeah I picked these out I quite liked that but then I used the purple butterfly so that didn't that wouldn't really work unless I can find another purple butterfly these are all my my fussy cut bits I did put those aside because I thought they might be quite nice. Um, the black butterfly, black and white butterfly from the book I showed you the other day, which is not on my desk now. Um, I, I did show it in a video very recently. I might go a bit more florally on this one, maybe overload the florals, maybe. Daisy too. Um, what do we think? I've got a smaller butterfly as well. What I'm going to just quickly do is see how these stamp flowers look in amongst that. I quite like that but I'm not so sure about the butterfly. might need a colour butterfly so what I'm going to do is I am going to use this. quite like those flowers. Uh, they do need a bit of an ink so I apologise in advance. I'm going to overdose the florals. lots of florals. I just pulled out these tiny little fussy cuts that I've done um, that really made my wrist ache when I was doing them. It was going to be nice to actually use them. Now uh, so that one's going to go in the centre. way to ink these but they're you have to kind of dab down because otherwise they um they rip and bend and move and I think this one's gonna have to go that side so oh this is probably exciting for you isn't it watch me ink and glue so many teeny weeny flowers 
There was something I wanted to say. I'm always doing that, aren't I? Hello, I'm back. <laughs> that was the door twice. Amazon delivering something and then decided they were going to deliver someone else's package here as well. So the door went twice. So what I thought I'd do is I'd just quickly finish sticking these down so you didn't have to watch me um, ink and glue all of those little flowers. So I need to make the card which needs to be just short of 12 centimetres by 10 and a half. We'll do it. Just short of 12, so I'm just going to wiggle that down a little bit by 10 and a half. Now it doesn't matter if it's a bit too small, but it does matter if it's a bit too big, obviously, because you won't get it in your envelope. And we'll just pop that, make sure that fits. Still got a bit of glue seepage to, oh, that's actually on the inside. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm sorry about the lighting, but it's um, it's dark here. So if I grab my large punch, I mean this is nothing new. You've seen me do this a hundred times, and I'm going to ink around the edge, and I'm going to use my Tim Holtz flowers again. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about the glare as well on, because of the lights. Um, I've got a new desktop, but it's um, it's a little bit more shiny than the last the last one, which is great because it's easier to wipe and it's a much better quality. It's a lot thicker, um, but it is a bit shiny when I have to have all the lamps on. Ah, right, so I actually want the lighter ink and my little block. And I'm going to use the thinner um, stamps first. And I'm going to use my lighter vintage photo distress ink. Now, my vintage photo is um, fairly light now anyway, even though um, I've re-inked it because the pad is, I think it's just about had it. So I do need to pick up a new one of these. So like I said, I'm going lighter flowers in the background and the smaller ones. Just use quite a selection of these. Gives it that kind of field, field effect. And what other one shall we have? Um, I think I'll go this one. So now I'm going to switch to my um, Ground Espresso and I'm going to use some of the larger, kind of bolder flowers for the foreground. These need a good clean. Just kind of wipe them with baby wipes. <laughs> I hear you all going. Ah! <laughs> and this one. This one quite high. And one more. But I love the way you can layer these, and then if you wanted even more layering, you could then go in with um, some even dark, even darker brown, like my um, potting soil archival ink, or even a black to kind of you know bring it forward even more. So I like that, and I like the effect you get with the flowers at the front and then the the printed flowers in the background. So now it's just a case of do I add <laughs> do I add a butterfly? 
that's a lovely one and I've just bent that to pieces but it goes quite well on that brown got that one there's that one's not very good I haven't finished fussy cutting that out really what else do we have we have one that's a bit on the hoof which I don't want don't want a butterfly on the hoof a couple of black ones if I got? there's a really big black one there that's a bit too much I think um may need to do a bit more butterfly fussy cutting I can see in my future lots of plants left that's got a tiny bit of red on it what's this one right well I've got a few butterflies there so let's have a these are butterflies to fussy cut still let's have a little look at what they look like through the envelope see that was the one that I had my eye on and I just bent it That's a possibility. I still like that one, even though it's a little bit bent. I kind of like the idea of it popping out of the corner. I'm not sure about that one. And then we have no. So this is the black and white's not going to work. This is the last last option. Now, do I go small or do I go big? going for this one. So I'll close this again without closing any butterflies into it and I'm just going to give this an ink and I think I think I'm going to use the ground espresso because I want this a little bit darker to stand out against that printed background. So I'm just going to gauge roughly where that's going to sit in my right so I want those cool right we are nearly there we are nearly there sorry if I've done a lot of gluing and inking in this video I am um, not quite with it <laughs> You could probably tell. Oh, I don't know. It's been a crazy couple of days. And I knew the, where the little join was in that plant was roughly where I wanted the antenna of the butterfly to be. So that should be not bad. Should be not bad. Okay, so now I'm just going to close my envelope up now I'm happy with that now what I don't want to do is what I did on this one and that's glue this because you can see I've made rather a mess up here um, but you know what are you going to do <laughs> like I said things are not going exactly to plan today there we go a little bit of glue down there and a little bit of glue down there and I'm going to close this up. And this is, um, because it's this kind of linen paper, it does actually kind of um, move a little bit. And it's not completely quick grab. Let me just put that there. Let's give this a bit of a wipe because I've made a bit of a mess and I don't want to get ink too much on my envelope. I haven't inked the back but I have inked around the front. I think that's really pretty. Um, I'll continue to remove glue after the video. Just slide our little journaling card in there. Move him mm. over. And now he's in the envelope he seems a lot lower. <laughs> Oh, how did that happen? Oh well, there we go. So that's my little floral envelope with a butterfly. 
and these are the other two that I've made they're quite simple it's um, obviously going to be a bit more difficult if you haven't got a die cutting machine but you could absolutely draw um, a shape and cut round it or even use a tear ruler and if you're in my Facebook group and you are after a tear ruler I posted a link yesterday how to make a free one um, from a marvellous lady something Lane ah what's her name the link is in my Facebook group anyway and it's awesome she's super super fabulous for coming up with an awesome idea um, so there we go there's some window envelopes with a floral theme um, let me just zoom in slightly so you can see them a bit better um, I hope you found something in that useful I'm sorry about the inking and the and the and the gluing but just thought I'd share it with you um, have a great day I will be back as I always say I need to I keep trying to stop saying that but it just seems to happen every time um, I will be along with another video uh, until then take care see you later